still in our first hour right here on the Now Morning Show. And it is Tobago Thursdays. Very excited because our next conversation is about the Nostalgia Art Exhibition. It is approaching. And today we are going to chat with Shinari Richardson about his first solo art exhibition happening this August. Shinari, good morning and welcome to the Now Morning Show. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Great. I'm fine. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you with us this morning. Thanks so much for getting up, maybe a little bit earlier than you are used to, but it's definitely for a good cause yeah. because we have a lot to talk definitely. about. So one of the first things is, who is Shinari? Right. I am basically, I'm, I'm a visual artist, well, from, basically from Tobago originally. However, I have, I basically, I, I always say I'm a Trinidad and Tobago artist. Why? Because I've actually basically had the opportunity to touch both places, how I went to school at UWE and all of that. So about about my artwork, I focus, focus mainly on portraiture and landscape. As you can see, a landscape right in the back here, the back of me right here. So, yes, I focus mainly on portraiture and landscapes. And basically, I've... I've um, I basically did a lot of portraits um, from a prominent person throughout the, the region and the world, such, for example, as Shabarang, T.I., Bojo Banton, and, and all these other people. I even had a, I even had a painting of the, of the parliament as well. And one time I was commissioned to do a painting for the prime minister as well. That was uh, between 2018 and 2019. Yeah, that's how little gives about me. That's fantastic. All right, so viewers, of course, you're seeing on screen there some of the work by Shinari, definitely inspiring and bringing many of our icons to life. You can actually see the joy in the faces there of the portraits, and we have a landscape of the Red House. And interestingly enough, too, seeing here, what was that? That was a leatherback turtle and so much more. Shinari, one of the images that just yeah. came across the screen appeared to be that of a doctor holding open his jacket. Would you say if that would have been from the frontline workers' perspective during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, that, I actually did that in 2020. Well, because that time there a lot of the doctors were saying that they were overwhelmed and all of that. And basically they were like, I, I consider them at the time were superheroes because they had to be going through all the lights of the breath and all these. Um, basically they were in the front line, actually defend, actually defending us from this virus. So I actually came up with this idea. I said, you know what, I'm going to do something, um, do something to commemorate them in a sense. And you definitely have, because we know that artwork is going yeah. to live on forever. Now, let's talk about the theme right. for this upcoming exhibition. Nostalgia in particular, what inspired you to touch on that theme with your artwork this year? Well, basically, how I, how I, basically how I got, got to talk about this theme here, because a lot of, uh, you had to go, if you, I always say, if you don't know where you come from, you would not know where you're going. So I decided to like have, a, have basically things from from ever since we gained our independence in 1962 to present, like from prominent from prominent persons such as sporting icons, sporting icons, musical icons, as well as um, as well as the prime ministers, and even even they have a collection with the um, the chief secretary, some the the chairman, right? It's up because. Like for instance, a lot of persons don't know how. Um, besides, a lot of persons don't know about it. Had um, it had something called the chairman or the THA before yeah. Mr. Hochoy Charles right up to um, the present chief secretary, Mr. Augustine. Like a lot of people, like in my generation, don't even know how um, Jeff Davidson, Jeff Davidson, and enough the Nuna them look like. And what? And some people don't even know how Hochoy was. They didn't know how Hochoy Charles looked that looked like back then. So I actually replicated all these pieces and stuff just um just to bring back all of that as well and even some and even going back to some of the sporting icons such as his preferred and all of that will will be a part of this exhibition as well. So we hear about sporting icons, you've mentioned the THA, and one of the things that we are interested in learning is what inspired you or how did you choose who you wanted to immortalize on canvas did you look at perhaps those who have made history those who made a personal impact on you or just on society in general well basically on society and 
because yes, basically on society it was a, basically a hard choice to choose some because it has so many of them. So it, basically how I did it, I kind of went down into, into the process of elimination and decided like, well, from my personal perspective, who would who would be who would be included, who would not be included, that kind of way. So yes, that's how I kind of got, got, got how I got there. So we're noticing from a lot of the images that are on the screen right now that you have a multitude of colors in your portraits. Is this perhaps one of your yes. signatures when it comes to artwork? Well, well, yes. I actually started that. I actually discovered that like last year while I was finishing up my final year at UWE. So I kind of just I was a basically an experiment, and I actually called it using portraiture. So I was like. Just experimenting with it, and my lecturer was like, the lecturer I fell in love with it, and I also fell in love with it, but my lecturer actually fell in love with it, and everybody was like, they like this side of me. So I just decided to put that, put that into it, and I realized, yeah, this is, this is the approach I am willing to go at. I think we have all fallen in love with it because it's such a perfect representation of your artwork and our culture meshed into one. Yeah. Now, that's a great accomplishment. And another great accomplishment, of course, is that this is your first solo art exhibition. How does it feel? Well, it, it, was, because it was actually long overdue, but as you know, everything don't happen before its time. So ever, ever since I like, started art, and coming up over the years, that in 2014 rather, and coming up over the years, everybody been like, when am I seeing your first art exhibition? And I was like, soon, because I personally, well, yeah, there's no one, yeah, there's no, basically no one you're ready for something. And I just decided to, as I finished my degree and all of that, I was like, yeah, it, this is the time, this is the time, man. All of that because I'm just who knows me. I, I'm I'm really passionate about really very passionate about nation building and the country and all, and all of that too. Yeah, so I I decided to visit it around Independence Time. I think it's absolute divine timing. Great time, of course, for independence. Great time, of yes. course, for you in your career. And just a great time in general for us as a nation. So just going back to this being your first solo art exhibition, is this preparation yes. different to others that you may have worked on? And what has it been like preparing for this moment? Well, actually, it has been a learning experience. Since this is my this is a solo exhibition and like how normally you would have to um like, like in the trend that space and all of that you normally just book a book a art gallery like Horizons or one or one of these people and the places like that. I'm actually I'm actually doing it from scratch like from scratch as to get a venue and all of that because right because I had to I actually had to get in consultation with the chief with the, um, with the, with the chief secretary and all that so hence the reason. He actually offered me this space to use the space of a cultural complex. Since it's a bigger space and they want to make sure that place that place is fully utilized. So I was actually offered to use this space and all that. And since they will be lighting up and all that, they they lighting up the, the um complex for independence. So it was a big it's a great combo in one. So all that was all that was all that basically worked worked out worked out, worked accordingly in one time. But in terms of the preparation I would say yeah, it's actually been a lot because when you think you have some, you think you have some pieces, you realize that after adding this piece, after take out that piece, and that's how I've been going right through. And yeah. So you've definitely had your hands in all aspects of this um, exhibition. What would you say after everything that you've mentioned has perhaps been one of your biggest challenges in getting ready for it? Well, basically getting all the logistics and all of that because uh, exhibition is not just about getting the pieces and all of that. That's that's the mainly the important part of the exhibition, but basically getting the, the logistics, or all the things in place, all all the um, basically all, all your vendors and all these people in place, all these things, all these things. They, basically, is the preparation that's really the hardest part. The pain, the um, painting aspect. To me, that would be the easiest part of it, but it's actually getting the logistics and all these things together. That that basically the most challenging part of preparing for your first school art exhibition. 
Wow, it sounds definitely like a learning process and something that is the beginning yes. of a beautiful journey for you. Shanari, before we close this morning's conversation, can you just share with us where we can get more information about your exhibition? Oh, yes, you can get it on all my social media handles, such as Facebook, Shanari Richardson Act, Instagram, that's Shanari, well, Shanari Richardson Act, but it's Shanari underscore Richardson underscore Act. And you get all the information there. So how we are doing it, we um we actually have a sign of sheet but via Google form. Why we chose that process? Because we want to we want to get in more information about uh, like how to go forward, like in terms of how we how we're going to do another active art exhibition within the future. So this this is my first I was like I know like what what they do is and they do and all of that and like in terms of stuff, in terms of stuff like if people have a, a, any allergies and all these kind of things, there. In terms of like preparing, preparing like the, the, um, the refreshments and all of that too. Or oh, that's that's hence the reason I did that. Google, I did it in a Google form, and it, and you get the ticket and all of that from there. So that, that, that's why we chose that that approach. So everything will be compiled and so on. Fantastic. Shanari, thank you so much for being with us this morning on the Now Morning Show. Looking forward to seeing yeah. this exhibition and many more coming from you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Trinidad and Tobago, that was Shanari Richardson. There is a lot more coming up on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.